So kicking it off, welcome. My name is Patty. <laughs> and um, this is my first YouTube Q&A. Okay. <clears throat> so I have here with me a cup of coffee and bum ba bum Instagram questions. So I think I'm just going to be choosing random questions or questions that I kind of just feel like answering or questions that I see on repeat. So here we go. How many times a day do you train? Usually only once. I usually only train between an hour and two hours once a day. Um, sometimes I'll go for a walk, but in the past couple of weeks have not been going for my walks. Tisk tisk. And then sometimes if I'm like bored and have enough time and have energy, I'll go to the gym twice. But that's pretty rare. Once a month, I'll do something like that. My normal schedule is about five days a week, an hour or two, once a day at the gym. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Next question. What's your least favorite body part to train? Personally, it's hamstrings. I don't like training hamstrings. Like even just the exercises necessary to perform to work your hamstrings, I don't like doing them. Let alone the fact I'm pretty quad dominant. I just don't enjoy working my hamstrings. So they're already kind of crummy. I don't like working them, which makes it even worse. Hamstrings. Weak point of mine. Somebody asked, is your name Lean Beef IRL? Legally? <laughs> no, it's Patty. So it's kind of just like a fun little play on words, you know. My name's Patty, Lean Beef, Patty. But I'm alright. Someone asked, favorite abs exercise. This is probably a pretty unpopular answer because a lot of people like to rain on this ab workouts parade but I really like the weighted crunch machine it's like a machine there's like five different like brands of machine some of the brands I don't like I don't know if it's just that they don't fit well with my body structure or I don't like the way that they move like how they're designed to move. I don't know what it is, but there's like two brands in particular that I don't know the name of the brand, but when I see them, I'm like, that's a good machine. I used to do like 90% of my body weight for like 200 reps every day, basically. It was crazy. It was crazy. I was, I was cracked. I don't do that anymore because I'm just worried about over developing my core at this point. And I don't want to do that particularly right now. <laughs> But I used to do that like rep set thing. I would do that every day. And aside from that, I like bicycle crunches and I like hanging leg lifts even though it does a lot of like, you need a lot of hip flexor strength. Yeah. Someone asked, where are your glasses from? I actually get this question kind of a lot. First of all, thank you. I like these glasses too. I've been wearing glasses since I was in middle school. So I've gone through a few pairs. These are my current ones, and I really like these ones. They're from Guess. I'm not making you guess the brand. The name of the brand is Guess. Yeah. <laughs> but I used to not wear glasses as much. I used to wear contacts, like, every day. I don't know what changed. Somebody asked, how do you improve your flexing skills? Love your content. BTW. Red Heart. Um, firstly, thank you. I really appreciate that. You improve your flexing skills basically in the same way you improve with anything else, it's just practice. There's like little things you can do, visual cues, like obviously look in a mirror when you do it, that's really helpful. So th I think this is more for like performing exercises, but if you have like a gym partner or something, when you're doing the exercise, they can touch whatever muscle you're supposed to be trying to move weight with. Um, you could kind of do that, you know, maybe. I'm not like a bodybuilder so like I've never I guess professionally structured like a flexing routine but I'd imagine when you have like a flexing coach I think bodybuilders have that they'll like touch the muscle maybe and be like flex this and they'll be like Mrah! and they'll be like wrong and they'll be like Mrah! and they'll be like right um but yeah anyway that was a very long answer 
Practice makes progress. And progress gets better continuously. <clears throat> well, sometimes it goes like this, but that's okay. My poses that I chose, not that like I chose, but like that I like to do, I do them because they feel right for my body. So people are like, oh, these JoJo poses, like that feels right. That like feels like I should be doing this, you know? So that's why I do it. And I just kind of get better at moving because I do it whenever I pose. You don't, you don't even have to pose for long. Maybe just like a couple minutes in the mirror. My mouth is like watering, ah, like a dog. Ah, I feel like something's wrong. Oh my god. Okay, whatever. Try to ignore that. Let's see. So the how long have you been doing fitness? Question is always like kind of a hard one for me because I've been going to a conventional gym for like maybe almost a decade. For some of that period of time, it was like wasn't going, you know, it hasn't been continuous, but like approaching, it's been longer than five years, you know, but it hasn't always been good. And I haven't always been doing the programs that I do now. I just started doing the big three lifts basically this year. Okay. So, and it's not like my physique has changed significantly because of the big three lifts thus far. So that just goes to show like, you don't need to be doing what everybody else is doing. I did like full body workouts for most of my gym experience. And then I recently started switching to push pull legs. I just like it better, fits my needs better. I feel like I get better workouts in, but it's totally preference. Anyway, I feel like I talked about, that wasn't even the question. Back to the question. Before I started going to the gym, I did gymnastics for my entire childhood. And I did the kind of gymnastics that's like super competitive and super life consuming. So I was at that kind of a gym doing gymnastics for four, four and a half. It was between three and a half and four and a half hours, five days a week. So, but I enjoyed it for most of the time up until I didn't enjoy it and then I quit. And then I had a life crisis and then I did tennis for like two seconds and jujitsu for a little bit. But even while I was in jujitsu, I was also in a like conventional commercial gym. So that answer was way too long, but hopefully <laughs> it answered something. Let's see. Any advice for someone who's never been to a gym but wants to step on that journey? So I feel like whenever I answer this question, it's really not the answer anyone wants to hear because it's not really like concrete. It's so abstract that at least I know for me, I don't want an abstract answer. I want this exact step will take you here, but it's not that simple because we all are on our own little journey. But my advice for that is really the hardest thing and probably what most people struggle with, whether or not we acknowledge it or not, is discipline. So a lot of people aren't used to the discipline. Whenever someone asks me about motivation, I think really what they mean is discipline because they think, oh, I'm so pumped to go to the gym, blah, blah, blah. You won't be. That's unrealistic. You can't expect that from yourself. So for someone brand new, my advice is set up a schedule that is very reasonable for you to tackle. You know what I'm saying? So let's say, for example, this is what I did in high school. I would go to school at 7.45 in the morning, whenever school started. And honestly, looking back on it, I feel like I should have gone to the gym after school, but for whatever reason, I had like a lot of anxiety and I did not want to go to the gym after school. I wanted to go when like nobody was there. I wanted to get it done first thing in the morning. I never gave myself the option not to go, but I would wake up at 5.30 every morning before school and go to the gym. Up until I had to leave, I would change at the gym and go straight to school. That's a lot, but it's just an example of creating a schedule around your pre-existing schedule. And my advice is to not go super gung-ho about it. I think, you know, speaking on the new year, that's where a lot of people go wrong is that They've never been to a gym before, or maybe they've only been to the gym in January every year, and they go wrong because they're like, I'm gonna be a gym person now. I'm gonna go to the gym, 
I'm gonna work out for two hours, five days a week, even though I've never done that before, I'm gonna do it. And then they get overwhelmed because that is so difficult to digest, you know what I'm saying? Build a schedule that's not going to overwhelm you. Maybe that's once a week. That's better than nothing. Maybe you go to the gym once a week and you do a 10 minute walk every day when you would not have done a walk otherwise. That's good progress, all right? And then every couple of weeks, maybe you increase it. Eventually, you'll be going to the gym however much you like want to go to the gym. And you'll be used to the schedule because you've slowly acclimated. So slowly acclimate yourself. <laughs> That's my advice. Somebody asked, how should I manage exercising when I'm sick? This is a good question. Again, it kind of depends. Just full disclosure, I'm not a doctor, okay? But I feel like this is kind of a common... I feel like I can say this because... I don't know! Okay, I'm not a doctor. Moral of the story. But my advice is to get better. So if you're really sick, get better. Because if you're working out while you're sick, you might cause yourself to be sick longer. You're prolonging the process. So focus all your energy on getting yourself better, whether that's sleeping, Maybe go for a little walk, take some warm baths, whatever you need to do to get better. And then come back to the gym. Don't force yourself to be as strong as you were before. Cause I've done that and it's super embarrassing. Um, tiny story if you want to listen. One time in high school, I was sick for like two weeks. Um, and I wasn't at the gym and I came back and I was doing the leg press. And back then, you know, I was able to get X amount of weight on there. <sighs> And I got back and right away I was like, I'm gonna do that X amount of weight. It's only been two weeks, I could do it. I could not do it, okay? Don't be like me and force yourself to be where you were before. You need some time to adjust back. Anyway, I crushed myself in the leg press. I was like leg pressing and I went down and I was like, I can't get it back up. <laughs> so I just like, like a little bean, popped out the top and it was super embarrassing. That's back when I worked out at like five in the morning. Just the regulars were there. Nobody said anything. I don't even know if anybody saw me, but I didn't look around to acknowledge if they did. Somebody asked, why short hair? They are not bad. I actually get this question more frequently than I would suspect. And it's not even like from strangers. It's like people that kind of know me too. They ask like, why did you cut your hair? Why did you dye your hair? Whatever. If you don't know, on some of my older pictures that I'll show for like, well, I changed. <laughs> um, I had like relatively long blonde hair. That's like my natural hair. But personally, I love long hair on other people, okay? I don't like it on me. I think it is so gross looking. I'll just like look at myself and be like, ah, ah, <laughs> gross. So I've been cutting my own hair since 2017 and that's a lie. I got my last professional haircut. It wasn't even professional. It was like from a beauty school. In 2017, I let it grow and it was doing its own thing up until 2000, probably like 2018, I cut bangs. And then 2019, I cut it to here. And I felt like I messed it up. So I was like, I have to commit. I was trying to do like a wolf cut, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. So that I was like, okay, maybe a mullet is also good. I ended up with one layer this long and one layer this long, two very distinct layers. And I feel like that's how my hair is right now, two distinct layers, but it looked really, really bad. So then I just had to like keep working at it Long story short, I end up with a pixie at the end of the day. And I'm like, mm, how did we get here? And um, I've been cutting my hair ever since. So, and for the record, I do kind of go for a mullet every single time. So, however it ends up, it ends up, but I'm trying like something like a mullet. I'm really salivating. This is crazy. And I made this coffee, so I know it's not like funky. Huh. Oh my god. Okay, someone asked, the best routine after all the holiday eating? So this is a good question. I think it also extends beyond just the holidays because there's some periods where you might just eat more and that's fine. My advice, after you have maybe a period, whether it's like a week, a day, one meal, whatever it is where you feel like you ate too much is a lot of this is like a mental thing. So it's really hard to do, but A, don't beat yourself up. Nothing will get better 
being mean to yourself. You have to try your best to just move on. I would advise just getting back on your regular schedule, you know? After like the holidays, after a nice meal out where you're like, oh wow, that was too much. Just get back on your schedule. Don't discredit your body. It is better at dealing with itself than you give it credit for. So your body can reach homeostasis back to balance on its own. It doesn't need you to go run an extra two miles to like make up for anything. It doesn't need that. Just get back to your regular schedule. You'll be fine. It'll be fine. Trust me. So that's my advice. Just get back to regular. Someone asked, what's good creatine? This isn't like a direct, this brand is good, but creatine monohydrate is the most studied, supported, I don't know. Creatine monohydrate, that's why I really like Gorilla Mind. If you didn't know, Gorilla Mind affiliate, <coughs> code beef, baby. Hopefully, yeah, that answered the question. Okay, somebody asked, tell us about those Russian tattoos on your arms. So yeah, these tattoos are in Russian. I think that has led a lot of people to believe I am Russian or can speak Russian, and I am so sorry, I cannot. But I chose Russian because I think it's a very lovely language and I love the way that it looks and sounds and everything, uh, but I don't speak it. And I chose Russian also because there's not a lot of Russian people that I know of, like where I live. So there's not that many people that can just look at this and be like, I know what that says. And I like that because it's more just like for me, you know? because these are really meaningful to me. And even if you could speak Russian and read what it says, you wouldn't understand what it means to me because it almost means the exact opposite of what it directly says. So, um, yeah! <laughs> it's like a public secret, you know? Anyone can see it, anyone can read it, but nobody knows what it means unless you know what it means. Someone asks, what do you tell yourself when you are not motivated? And what I do for that is, uh, kind of toxic in a sense, I guess. I tell myself things that really make me angry or I think about people or situations that really make me angry because <laughs> anger is like my main thing, how I push myself, I guess. Um, and I'm not saying that's gonna work for you. I'm not gonna say that's gonna work for everybody. Everybody has their own things that they like, but I like to be angry. Somebody asked, is it possible to attain a muscular body as a female without a tee shot? I guess it depends what your idea of a muscular body and like what your goal is, because I'm sure there's a certain level where you just like can't really get it without that kind of help, I guess. Personally, this physique, no tee shot required, but maybe if you want to get like very muscular, you may want to talk to your doctor to consider if that's even an option, you know? Someone asked, why did it take you so long to make a YouTube channel slash why make one now? Because I really didn't uh, want to before. <laughs> I really didn't know like what I wanted to do. It's kind of like a difficult thing because it's not like a lot of my friends do that. Even just being on my phone, sometimes I feel really bad because at least my idea culturally or socially, whatever, is like it's almost kind of disrespectful. Also, I never wanted to film at the gym. I'm low key kind of shy and it makes me so uncomfortable. Like, especially if I have to film by myself, so uncomfortable, <laughs> but I'll do it. And the way that I get over that embarrassment is I tell myself, this is just for me, you know? This is just to see my form. But if I have to start talking to the camera, I don't know, that's just like a different level. So, here I am. Ugh. There's so many questions and I feel so bad because I feel like I've... Ugh. There's no way I can answer them. So definitely I'm gonna have to do more Q&As, um, which is great. I love, I love little discussions. But hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully I feel like I answered some general questions. I'll definitely be doing more Q&As in the future. I'm always kind of doing them. Not always, but I do them fairly regularly on Instagram. So um, yeah, if you made it this far, thank you for being here. And I hope it was an okay enough video. Hopefully the editing has turned out okay. Um, and yeah, have a great rest of your week.